Okay, it's day five of the 12 Days of Christmas Stories. And today we're going to have a little poem and a story because the poem's short. So, um, first I want to say hello to Delta Ray. I am Thatcher Cole, Sierra Jade. I love you. Grandma loves you so much. I could just squeeze you if I had you so close. Okay, this one's called, the poem's called The Ball Game. Did you ever know a boy make believe he had a toy? That's the way babies play. Babies who are young and small make believe they play at ball. So this story is called Christmas Day. Boy, said Mrs. Howard one morning, looking up from a letter she was reading. I have a letter from your grandmama. She writes that she is returning to England shortly. So these little boys must be living in England. The boys went on with their breakfast without showing any great amount of interest in the piece of news, for they had never seen their grandmother. Oh my goodness, they had never seen their grandmother. And therefore, they could not very well be expected to show any affection for her. Now Mrs. Howard, the mother of the two boys and the aunt to the third little fellow, was a widow and very poor and often found it a hard task to provide for her three boys, as she called them. For having adopted her little orphan nephew, she always treated him as her own son. She sometimes thought it strange that old Mrs. Howard should not have offered to provide for Leslie herself, but she had never done so, and at last Mrs. Howard had ceased to expect it, but right now, at the end of her letter, Grandmama Howard wrote, I had been thinking that perhaps it would come a little hard on you to support not only your own two boys, but also Alice's son, and so on. My return to England, I propose that if you are willing to adopt one of them, for I am a lonely old woman, and she'll be glad of a young face about me again. Okay, she wants to adopt one of these children. After thinking the matter over, Mrs. Howard decided she would say nothing about their grandmother's intention to the boys, as she thought that it was just possible she might change her mind again. Time passed on, and winter set in, and full of the delights of skating, the boys forgot all about the expected rival of their grandmother. During the Christmas holidays, the boys one morning started off to Broom Meadow for a good day skating on the pond there. They carried their dinner with them and were told to be sure to be home before dark. As they ran along the frosty road, they came suddenly upon a poor old woman. So suddenly, Leslie ran up right up against her before he could stop himself. The old woman grumbled about lazy, selfish boys only thinking of their own pleasure and not caring what happened to a poor old woman. But Leslie stopped at once and apologized in his polite little way for his carelessness. I am sorry, he said. I hope I did not hurt you and let you have such a heavy parcel to carry, too. Won't you let me help you? Oh, come on, Leslie, said his cousins. We shall never get to the pond at this rate. Yes, go on, said the old woman sharply. Your skating is of great more importance than an old woman, huh? But Leslie's only answer was to take the parcels and trudge merrily along beside his companion. On the way to her cottage, the old woman asked him all sorts of questions about himself and his cousins. And then, having reached her cottage, dismissed him with scarcely a thank you for the trouble he had taken. But Leslie did not take it much to heart. He raced along, trying his hardest to overtake his cousins before they reached the pond, and was soon skimming about with the rest of them. Squire Lee home, in whose grounds the boys were skating, afterwards came down to the pond to watch the fun, and being a kind-hearted old gentleman, offered to give a prize of a new pair of skates to the boy who should win the greatest number of races. Oh, I'll bet they were excited about that. As it was getting late, it was arranged that the racing, racing should come off on the following day, and the squire invited all the boys who took part in it to come up to his house to a substantial tea after the fun was over. How delighted Leslie was, for he was a first-rate skater, and he did so want a new pair of skates. Oh, my goodness. Grandma used to skate. I can imagine how excited he was. But the squire's skates were not to be won by him, for on the following day, as he and his cousins were on their way to the pond, they came across the strange old woman whom they had met on the previous day. She was sitting on the ground and seemed to be in great pain. The boy stopped to ask what ailed her, and she told them that she had slipped and twisted her foot and was afraid that her ankle was sprained, for she could not bear to put it on the ground. She couldn't stand up. 
You mustn't sit here in the cold, said Leslie. Come, try to get up and I will help you home. Oh, Leslie, cried both his cousins, don't go. You will be late for the races and lose your chance at the prize. Poor Leslie. He turned first red and then white and then said in a husky tone of voice, Never mind. You go on without me. You're a good laddie, said the old woman. Will you be very sorry to miss the fun? Leslie muttered something about not minding much, and then the brave little fellow set himself to help the poor old woman home as gently and tenderly as he could. She would not let him come in with her, but told him to run off quickly as he could, and perhaps after all he would not be late for the skating. But Leslie could not bear to leave her alone and in pain, so he decided to run home and fetch his aunt. When Mrs. Howard arrived at the cottage, she can, you can think how surprised she was to find that Leslie's poor old woman was none other than Grandmama Howard herself, who, wishing to find out the real characters of her grandsons, had chosen to come in this disguise to the little village where they lived. You will easily guess which of the three boys Grandmama chose to be her little companion. And oh, what a lovely Grandmama she was, as not only Leslie but his cousins too found out. She always seemed to know exactly what a boy wanted and still better to give it to him. Walter and Stanley often felt terribly ashamed of the selfish manner in which they had behaved and wished they were more like Leslie. But Grandmama told them that it was never too late to mend, and they took her advice, and I am quite sure that at the present moment, if they were to meet a poor old woman dressed in distress, who was a poor old woman in distress by the roadside, they would not pass her by as they once did. Grandmama Howard by Anna Morrison. Wasn't that a cute story? It's like we never know when we help people what we're really doing. I mean, sometimes we stop and we help somebody and it makes us late. Or maybe we don't get to do something we want to do. But in the end, we find out that we were better off for helping somebody than we would have been if we hadn't. Remember our last story, we talked about how sometimes giving to other people makes us happier. And sometimes, and there is sometimes when we have to say no, you know, when we have to take care of ourselves first and make sure that we're okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's something you could think about and write about today. So anyway, Grandma loves you very much. I hope you have a wonderful Merry Christmas and a great day today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.